It's just a shame I can't find any, like, uh, intelligent drum and bass that's uh, Creative Commons for me to play in the background. I'm stuck with uh, pretty good Vaporwave. Alright, uh, yeah, so we're good to go and continue and pick up where we left off, I guess. which does require me to actually boot the game, which I haven't done already because it's frustrating to try and control the audio. <laughs> uh, because I'm just using the incredibly basic um, Twitch Studio beta rather than Streamlabs or uh, OBS, I find myself dealing with such problems all the time. I can't switch audio on the fly. You know, you get everything or nothing because it's a pretty basic program and my phone isn't connecting to the goddamn stream manager properly either, so I'm going to be slightly limited in my capacity to see um anyway, let's dive in. I'm going to be somewhat limited in my capacity to actually interact with chat because my phone will consistently disconnect and wipe the chat log. Which is really cool of it. I'm worried I might have damaged it because I dropped it in the sink the other day, and ever since then it's just been uh, reluctant, to say the least, to actually connect to the internet properly for more than 10 seconds at any given time. Perhaps, perhaps you might be saying, self-critical automaton, this surely is your- wait, which of these is- that's five- can I delete that? Apparently not. Select a file. Aha, there we go. I love these old school menus. Really deeply delightful to me. What's it saying? Oh yeah, so this this seems like it would be a good incentive to set up my double screen uh, system so that I can have, you know, two screens, because that's just a much better way of managing streams. But no, no, I'm a curmudgeon. And also I'd have to use my TV and it would be a pain in the ass to set up. I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. The battle for the Chaos Emeralds has begun. Chaos, that awful monster. I'll not allow you to grow stronger. I found one emerald in the Windy Valley, so I am off to a good start. I've researched, I've searched every nook and cranny of Mystic Ruins, so now I am off to Station Square. Uh, if I remember correctly, Sonic the Hedgehog is canonically like 12 or 14 here, and this does kind of read like a middle schooler mandatorily writing a letter to their grandparents about what they did on their summer for, uh, you know, a uh, classroom project. That's that's what they're called. So, um, we spent a while frustrated last stream. So far the plot is that Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't know who Robotnik is, which is fascinating because the canonicity the and conception soon. of a reboot and that kind of thing is just sort of not really engaged with in any way, which I wholeheartedly admire, to be perfectly frank. Everything is true and nothing is true, and Sonic, all we can really say about him is that he is indeed the Hedgehog. So, uh, yeah. Eggman, as Sonic declares, <laughs> uh, Sonic declares Robotnik to be Eggman, which is a name he invented on the spot. And really, I think all villains should be mandatorily assigned stupid nicknames. It's uh, it's really it's really the perfect way of dealing with them. It's not unlike dealing with a bully, you know. Um, if you can rename your your bully Jimmy Flip Flops, then either they will continue to slam you into the dirt, or they will no longer be a threat to you. What's this thing say? Try and deposit as many rings as you can. It may even help show you the way. So, uh, yeah, he's summoned a creature called Chaos. Oh, okay, so that's that's the gem I need to get. So I need to get as many rings as possible so that I can use them to, to climb Try up. And deposit as many I assume. Rings as you can. It may even help show you the way. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, okay, Pimmel minigame. I love a Pimmel minigame. Can I actually control Sonic at all? Because that feels against... I can. <laughs> uh, so, fun fact, there was actually a classic Sonic the Hedgehog game called Sonic Spinball, which was uh, a pinball-themed Sonic the Hedgehog um, experience. 
which I think was on the Mega Drive, like most of the good. Uh, oh, you can tilt the table even, that's great. But you can also, you can direct, you can direct him, that's a weird thing to be able to do. So it seems like the goal here is to gain as many rings as possible so that we can use them to successfully reach the gem that we're trying to get, which I've said already. But anyway, so Sonic Sonic Spinball was weird for being a, an actual Sonic adventure. That It wasn't Sonic-themed pinball tables, it was a Sonic the Hedgehog. Just like any other Sonic the Hedgehog, except that the medium by which you interacted with the environments, you know, the medium by which you controlled Sonic, was flippers. Um, not on, unlike a pretty cute game that's come out in recent years called uh, Roku's, Roku's Island Express, something like that, which is a uh, a metroidvania where the primary um, mechanic of movement is uh, pinball flippers, but the entire world is laid out by like one giant interconnected pinball table. Anyway, it's definitely weird and awkward to try and control his movement at the same time as we flip him around with the flippy flips. But yeah, so... Yeah, like, conceptually what was happening in Sonic Spinball was that Sonic was doing all the Sonic the Hedgehog normal things and jumping around and, and smashing bad guys like this. Well, we're more successful than that, usually. Um, I suppose if I lose all of my rings that I gain through the use of extremely effective pinball tactics, pinball wizardry, one might say, um, oh hi girl, like substance, substance, always nice to see you. Also nice to see Lisa, nice to, nice to see everybody else who's shown up. Uh, but yeah, there's always a pinball stage. It's kind of really entertaining to me the way that um, the Sonic Adventure games, as I mentioned before, just kind of completely dive in and out of canonicity. There's no interest whatsoever in attempting to establish some kind of canonicity or to retain... Uh, the logic as previously established in the 2D games of that world and its setting. Um, there's just a whole bunch of Sonic stuff. And um, this allows them to have a completely incomprehensible, mind-bendingly bullshit uh, plot, but it also lets them freely plunder the history for fun references. So yeah, like most Sonic the Hedgehog games have had a casino stage. And so in Sonic Adventure, in this inexplicably human world that he's found himself in, there is, of course, a casino stage. And it's a literal casino with, like, literal, actual... Well, I was going to say casino patrons, but we are the only person here, possibly because it's about four in the afternoon. Hi, Trokantaze. Uh, in, you know, in canon at any rate, it's uh, probably the middle of the night elsewhere. So if you charge up... Oh, it doesn't seem to work anymore. There we go. Oh, it only works forwards, I guess. Uh, yeah, there's a charged ability that we picked up that's a secret thing you can find which lets you extremely usefully uh, zip in a straight line through any rings that are in a reasonably linear straight system. Why did... Oh, that was the drains. Okay, so for some reason the casino pinball stage we were in dropped us into the drains, and then the drains... We've now successfully climbed up out of a, a, what I can only assume is a shower grate. So, um... Sonic Adventure DX earns the dubious pleasure of being the first game I've played to have two sewer levels lead directly into one another, considering we did a sewer level before we came into um, the casino zone. What's this? Is this showers? Is it normal for a casino to have showers? Most of them are hotels, but they don't normally have like truck stop showers in the back for you to explore. Oh, do the showers work? Are you kidding me? Well, you know, um... Oh, it does work. That's so stupid. What a delightful little detail. I, I miss it back when gamers would just put random shit in for no reason. Also, the fact that he's standing in a shower makes, really brings home the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog is a naked man. A naked man wearing only shoes and gloves. Like, I understand the logic of um, designing Sonic the Hedgehog to be that way, because when he was created, he lived on, you know, 
all the 2D games have him be in Animal People Planet with other animal people who are dressed like that. And Mickey Mouse rules apply. Like, 100% Mickey Mouse rules apply. Gloves and shoes, it's fine if you're an animal person. But as soon as you translate that animal person into a human context with men in business suits walking around outside and little girls chasing balloons and a burger shop with a man wearing a paper hat who will try and sell you burgers, as soon as you do that, he ceases he ceases to be in the Mickey Mouse paradigm and immediately becomes naked. Just an absolutely peculiar decision to make for your Sonic of Hedgehog game. Oh, I see how it works. Okay. So I need to make the pile big rather than make a line of I thought it would make I thought it would be like a line that I could make. Oh, it's literally it's got shower room written above it. I didn't see that. But yeah, no, I guess um, does the shower work is the kind of thing question that you ask when you're playing a, an immersive sim or something, you know? Can I flush the toilets being the question people have asked in every FPS ever made. That's slot machines and pinball. Is that the only thing they have? Kind of a weak-ass casino. There's, there's the shower, which earns you nothing. Ah, card games. That's more like it. Which are, Wait, card games and pinball? Is this going to be pinball again? It is, indeed. And it's got a, a cool little reference to Nights Into Dreams, which was the other beloved um, Sega property that you got around this time. I think... I don't think there was a, a Nights game before the Dreamcast, but it was one of the kind of like great lost ideas of the Dreamcast, because people remember the Dreamcast as a failed console that had a lot of really good ideas and a lot of really good games, but that nobody bought or played. <laughs> You know, um, for every uh, for every Sonic Adventure and uh, Nights into Dreams and Shenmue, uh, there's just a ton of and dra Dragon Dragoon was that one? <laughs> uh, anyway, there were a lot of good ideas, but um, ultimately the console, the failure of the Mega Drive, is what got. Um, Sega out of the independent console market and made them function as solely a developer and publisher. Oh, it was on the Sega Saturn. Good to know. See, I was going to do some research before this stream, but instead I have spent two days building characters for role-playing games instead of, you know, editing videos for my channel or doing research into the history of Sonic the Hedgehog because I have a lot of casual knowledge of the history of Sonic the Hedgehog because I've read a lot of articles about the history of Sonic the Hedgehog because I'm that kind of nerd. Um, but let's be honest, if I wasn't that kind of nerd, you wouldn't be here for my channel anyway. So... What the fuck was I talking about? Yeah, so I have a fair bit of knowledge of the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Industrial and in-character terms, you know? Thus my occasional references to the kindly Dr. Kintobor, whose name accidentally went backwards, turning him into the evil Dr. Robotnik, which was the original origin for Robotnik. <laughs> lest we forget. Lest we forget the sacrifice of kindly Dr. Kintobor. Um, although, of course, uh, Sonic does just arbitrarily rename him. Ah, oh, there we go. What's this do? That's just a round in a circle. Okay, that's nothing. Uh, does arbitrarily rename him Eggman in this one. Okay, I think I need the... I guess I need the, uh, the Knights one on the right. It's really hard to direct, uh... Sonic of Hedgehog. Sonic Hedgehogson. Son fits ick. I wonder if I get in trouble for shaking the table too much if I use the tilt ability. Anyway, there's a lot of bizarre history to Sonic the Hedgehog and... Oh, no, not quite. And, um, and the interactions with Sega and all of that kind of stuff. Aww. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> Um, balls, uh, colon zero is what I say in chats when I am surprised by something terrible happening, as any of my friends can attest. Oh, can I get the- no, I can't get the thing. Why, is she- is she good at- are you good at pinball? What the fuck? No one told me that. You should definitely borrow, um, Roku's Island Express from me then if you like pinball. 
And by borrow, I mean technically pirate, because I have it on GOG, which means that it's... God, I'm never going to hit that final target. Ah, oh, there we go. 238 rings. Nice. So the implication here... Oh shit, are you literally here to play pinball? I do want to play pinball. <laughs> okay, there is going to be a first time, uh, a first time event that has never before happened on my channel. <laughs> Um, as I let my flatmate play Sonic the Hedgehog a little bit. <laughs> Possibly unnecessarily, given as I can maybe jump up here now? Apparently not. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, I have to go find it. I have to go find a pinball. A pinball for you to be a pinball wizard on. Alright, that's shower room. Shower room... You can play shower room if you want, but the prizes aren't very good. Uh, card and pinball we've done. Information. The prizes in information are better than the ones in shower because they're not actively detrimental to your health. Slot and pinball we've done. Was there another one or is it just that? Oh hey, I can smash. Oh hey! <laughs> Instead of complying, I can simply indulge in violence. <laughs> it solves every problem. Anyway. Oh, is that it? What's this? That's the shower again. What the hell is the... Alright, I am now gonna hand my controller off to my flatmate. Oh god, what's the controls? Uh, the flippers are the flips and the... Uh... What, what's the flip? Oh yeah, yeah. What do you mean, what's the flippers? You said you were good at pinball. And you can use the movement stick or maybe the d-pad to tilt. You know, because all... all... Pinball games have a tilting mechanic. Although as far as I can tell- Oh yeah, and it wiggles him as well. If you tilt the table, he moves around like you control the ball slightly. Oh, I'm terrible at this, Uh-huh. This was your idea. Oh no. I don't know if you're even audible to the people. Why don't you say hi? Why don't you come into the microphone and say hi to the folks at home? Hi, folks at home. <gasps> Something happened. Yeah, no, if you get into that little pipe, you just zip around oh. and don't gain anything as far as I What's can tell. The point? Fuck. <laughs> is that the first time you said fuck on stream? Actually? Is this the first time I've said fuck on stream? Now, what do you think the answer to that is? Probably not. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that the only swear word I haven't said on stream is probably cunt, but I mean, I guess we've crossed that event yeah. horizon now. Um, I mean, this is me we're talking about. The number of jokes I make about, for example, cum or butt sex or foot fetishes, like... It's hardly surprising, you know? That's true. How, is, how am I supposed to win this? Uh, I don't know. Is there a way out? No. You am got I yourself into your... this problem. Am I just stuck here forever? Yeah. Yeah, what? this was your idea and now Something you're- happened. Oh shit, you did what better did than you? me. <laughs> you matched two of the cards and so you got a bonus. In... Okay. Okay. There you go. Playing time is now over. So that was a fun little fun little adventure that we all went on, wasn't it? And we discovered that my flatmate actually is better at virtual pinball than me, despite my protestations, which is tragic, frankly. This might actually be enough rings that we can get the fuck out of here now. Oh god, that was not where I meant to go. Oh wait, hang on. It sends you back when you run out of balls, so if you just let the balls run out... Aha! I'm a genius. I'm, I'm, I'm a ball genius. A pinball magus. A geometer of the flippered way. I am never going to get a... I'm never ever going to get a full set of the same colour. That's simply not going to happen. I'm not going to try and do that. Because otherwise we will be here all day and I will lose my mind. What little of my mind I have left. Uh, which isn't very much after it all got drained away by by Robo COVID. Because let's not forget, I'm an artificial intelligence constructed solely to play video games for your benefit. You've already seen me lose my mind. Try and deposit as many rings as you can. It may even help show you the way. Anyway, I do find myself. 
wondering what the implications are here with regards to... I didn't look like it went up any higher. There we go. Yes. Nice. Ba, 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 bow. Hi, uh, hi, Stales. I guess you're here as well. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I get level C on all of these as far as I can tell. I don't know if I'm just bad at it or if it's just got really, really high standards. Oh, interesting. A magical gem has just appeared on the streets of not New York. Yeah. Hey. <gasps> it's that guy. Oh no, the Chaos Emerald. Oh no, you don't. This is exactly oh, what I said the problem would be. <laughs> Amen. Me. Several days ago. Hey, Sonic the Hedgehog, maybe you should just leave them in their mystical treasure oh, holes. Oh, man. What happened to that emerald we just had? Uh, I guess Eggman's got one of them. But the other one's safe. That guy must be desperate. That means his two to our one, and that's not good. Come on, Sonic! We need to get busy! Oh, hey, is that... So, you may have noticed something flapping through the air uh, very momentarily before disappearing. That is one of the other cool references that this game makes to the Sonic franchise and its history, which is the unfortunately named friend of Sonic the Hedgehog, Cream the Rabbit. We cannot watch uh, the secret scene on stream, on stream because, uh, if I remember correctly, the way Twitch... Uh, Twitch Studio integrates with stuff means that if I try and run YouTube on stream, uh, it automatically just refuses to play anything YouTube-y. I think. I think that's how it works. But yeah, so. It's kind of impressive how many references they managed to stuff this game with, considering... Um, there just hadn't been that much Sonic the Hedgehog at this point. You know, the first Sonic the Hedgehog game came out in 1991, I think? Uh, on the Sega Mega Drive or the Sega... Was that the Saturn in America? I can never remember. Anyway, Icarus, don't worry. Um, it's hardly worse than anything I've said on stream. Let's not forget the uh, uh, Cowboy Stinky Holes fiasco of um, Resident Evil 8. Oh, hang on, I should have gone and seen what that magic key that appeared was. Anyway, um... So Kareem the Rabbit, I believe, was a character who entered the franchise in... Oh, okay, so I have to take the key from the city to here? Apparently I can take it through the train, that's fair enough. So, uh, yeah. Kareem the Rabbit was, I believe, introduced for... Actually, you know what? I have no idea. I can't remember when Cream the Rabbit showed up. The train headed for Station Oh, hey man, what's up? The rocks crumbled and revealed an entrance to a cave. The soil seems a lot like the soil from the Mystic Ruins. I thought this was the Mystic Ruins. Um, because I've just realized I'm thinking of Blaze the Cat. Blaze the Cat was invented for the Game Boy Advance Sonic the Hedgehog games. Uh, the imaginatively named Sonic the Hedgehog Advance, I want to say. Or was it Sonic Rush? That might have come later. I could have done research on this, but I chose not to. I chose to think about fictional wizards instead, and it was an entirely more sensible and adult use of my time. Sonic Advance 2. Okay, so Sonic, so Cream was, advent, was it much like Blaze the Cat invented for those. However, there was actually a, um, a rabbit character in the Sonic canon already. There was one of the characters created for the... Uh, uh, the Archie comics, um, Sonic the Hedgehog comics, which ran for a really, really long time and were very popular for a very long time. A lot of people forget this, but there is just a whole, like, third canon of um, American comics. You've got your Marvel Universe, your DC Universe, and you've got, of course, the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, franchise, including infamous person Ken Penders, who I'm supposed to talk about, but we won't be doing that until later. Uh, now, it was in a back alley, I think, that the magic key dropped. 
Anyway, yeah, I'm probably going to talk about Ken Penders and what he did to you. <laughs> Ken Penders and what he did. Um, he knows what he did. Later on, on other streams, probably after I remember to do actual research or whatever. But yeah, so... There actually was a rabbit character already in the Sonic franchise before. Oh, hey man. You're an animal guy? I'm an animal guy. That's so cool. You're like the only other animal person I've ever met except Tails. Froggy, where are you? Disappointing. Froggy, where are you? I would get a plushie of this guy, I think. That's completely outrageous. That guy has another date today. Are you talking are you talking about the cat? The fishing the fisherman cat? Anyway, girl, look, Substance, I didn't know you were into Sonic the Hedgehog and or the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, yeah, I've actually, because I've only, I've played an absolute shitload of Sonic Adventure 2, but never Sonic Adventure 1, so I had no, <laughs> I had no idea that's what Big the Cat sounds like. Anyway, so, uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Yeah, uh, there was, there was a character in the comics, and who I believe also showed up in the... Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Saturday morning cartoon known as Sat-Am, which was one of the two Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons, and the, the more widely appreciated one, I think, although the other one had a lot of kind of classical, Tex Avery, you know, anarchic, silly humour. Wait, hang on. Fuck off. You're telling- John St. John voiced Big the Cat. Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. Also, where the fuck is that magic key? I don't- I can't find an alleyway. Maybe it's over by the casino. Uh... Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, there was actually already a, a rabbit character in the Sonic canon who- I forget her name? <laughs> Uh, I'd love it if she was already called Cream. But, um, yeah, she was a, a cyborg who was half roboticized by Robotnik. Because let's not forget, Robotnik's evil master plan always hinges on uh, turning small animals into robots to serve his uh, new world order. So, um, she was half roboticized and rescued by Sonic, and then she was like, very angsty. There was a lot of angst in those Sonic comics. It was a fascinatingly weird mix of, uh, like, goofy, like, children's news agent stand comic book humour mixed with, like, angst and terrible things happening. Which is kind of what happens to any setting that, that, that lasts long enough. Any kind of single franchise that goes for a decade and a half eventually just becomes an angsty mess because of, you know... <laughs> Because of the poison that exists That's in the brains of writers, this this fundamental and inescapable tendency. Um, anyway, so that's just a neat little detail of the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait, this game handles the story? Which story? The story of a a rabbit getting put in a roboticization machine but only half saved and then having angst about the fact that she's technically a dead person. Um, Because I would be surprised if they had chosen to include that in this one. Where the hell was the rock hole in the wall? Was it this way? Nope, that ain't it. Hey man, where's your buddy gone? Oh, there it is. Aha! Oh, I mean, the story of this game is already nonsense as far as I can tell. Um, but am I correct in thinking it involves some of the Ken Penders canon additions with regards to, like, echidnas being an ancient, like, super, superhuman, super science magic guys? You know, they're elves, basically. Oh, okay. I have I have delved a little bit into uh, the, the way the story is told, because my understanding was that um, there was a different storyline for each character, and you could progress through them in, in any order and each bit would fill in the bits from the next one, which sort of seems to be the case, except that you play through the same levels from the perspective of different characters and in so doing, hear a lot of uh, other other things. 
Um, so I did I did play through the first chapter as as uh, Tails after unlocking Tails. Discovered that we actually did ex like exactly the same thing, um, and then was really amused by the fact. <laughs> Even if you're frozen, Even if you're frozen. Of times, and you should be able to crack through. Oh yeah, um, I like that there's no explanation as to why Sonic has a fairy companion, much like a little elf boy. But uh, we can we can believe that that's you know exegetic if we so wish that that's just something there for us players that he's not actually interacting with. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm well aware that you need to play through every character's storyline, and I I am intending to do that on the course of these streams. Um, Using those things takes a weirdly intense amount of concentration. <laughs> um, so, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, so um, I was very amused to see that... Ah, oh, dip, I fell down. I was really, really amused to see that um, there's kind of like a Rashomon thing going on, where you see the same events from multiple people's perspectives, and they remember different people saying different things. Um, Sonic seems like I don't know if it's an intentional an intentional comedy, but if it is, it's very, very funny, and if it's not, it's even funnier. Sonic seems to remember himself being much cooler than Tails remembers Sonic being. I'm more inclined to trust Tails' uh, version of events than I am Sonic's. Which means that um, from Sonic's point of view, he meets he meets uh, Eggman and knows who he is and is like, yo, Eggman, that evil guy. From um, from Tails' point of view, Sonic meets Eggman and is like, I'm gonna call you Eggman because you're shaped like an egg, and I have no idea who you are, and Tails is like, oh, that's well-known supervillain evil scientist uh, Dr. Ivan Robotnik, and Sonic's like, nope, Eggman, I decided, and that... If it's an intentional joke, it's very good, and I do love it. Oh, I was expecting that to actually give me... Some cool rings to fly with. Also, I was going to make a comment about how we could infer that rings are money in this world by the fact that the casino uh, uses them, Use but... The panel to jump. It may even help guide your way. Well, that worked. Um, but the casino clearly uses them as an equivalent to, like, casino chips because there were gold coins that filled up in the place when you hand in the rings, so... Very Super Mario. Okay, rings are money in Sonic's world. Okay, but in Sonic's world or in Earth? Because this story is currently taking place on Earth, which is not Mobius, you know, the world the, that Sonic is from in the earlier games and the world on which those earlier games take place. And as far as I can tell, there is no canonicity whatsoever. It's just a whole bunch of ideas mushed together. So, oh, fuck yes, yeah, snowboarding. Oh, hell yeah, this is radical. Oh, this kicks ass, this is tubular. Nice to see that there was a, there's clearly a precedent for it, as opposed to it just coming out of nowhere in the next game. I actually wish I could play my favourite snowboarding game of all time on stream. Uh, unfortunately, if I attempt to play SSX3 on stream, I will get instantaneously hit with 10,000 copyright strikes. Um, and... I was going to make a joke about Jeffy B's uh, orbital space laser, but then I realised that I'd made that joke last time. <laughs> Some people say that making the same joke twice is just, um, you know, a running joke and an entirely valid comedic technique in and of itself. I say it's a weakness. I say only hacks do that. So take that, guys who are hacks. Is this a ref- I suppose if it's called Ice Cap Zone, then obviously it's a reference to Ice Cap Zone, but it's far from the only snow or alpine or mountainous levels in Sonic of Hedgehog games. Okay. Hell yeah, I don't get points for that, but I don't care. Anyway, my own personal theory, as I have mentioned previously, is um, that Eggman is uh, Robotnik's supervillain name, and Robotnik is his actual, like, Christian 
Christian name? Is that the term? That's not what people say. Given name, I guess. Um, like, that's what, you know, if he paid taxes, which he doesn't because he's an evil, evil super scientist, but if he paid taxes, he would be paying it as Ivan Robotnik, so that's fine. Is it Ice Cap Zone in Sonic 3 that had the really cool soundtrack that I have heard many, many, many trance remixes over the years? Okay, so my my inference that I made based on later Sonic the Hedgehog games is ac actually accidentally canon. That's kind of fascinating to me. But yeah, no, I, I, I have fond memories of the music from uh, Ice Ice Zone. Ice Ice Baby Zone. Ice Zone Baby Zone Ice. Based primarily not on playing the game, because I didn't play Sonic 3 very much as a kid. Even after I, as a teenager, got a hold of a copy of Sonic Mega Collection, which was a um, PS2 and GameCube re-release of all of the earlier Sonic games on uh, collecting them all, except for Sonic CD, because Sonic CD was the one everyone remembered as being the absolute best one. So what they did was actually also release Sonic Gems Collection, which had a whole bunch of games nobody cared about, and Sonic CD. So that you had to get both if you wanted to have all the good Sonic games. Very clever, very sneaky marketing tactic there. Um, anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, yeah, so I, I mostly was unfamiliar with a lot of Sonic 3 music. I mostly played Sonic 2. Um, and for some reason, Sonic 3D Island, which, shout out to Jess if you're watching, is because uh, my best buddy, my, my childhood best friend, had a bunch of Sonic games, including Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, which I believe was the first ever 3D Sonic game, predating the full 3D uh, one on the Genesis, which I, I want to say Genesis? Or was Genesis the American name for the Sega Mega Drive? Was it the Saturn that was capable of three, full 3D? God. God. Honestly, I have huge respect for Sony just for calling their thing PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like, absolute stars. Like, absolute industry veteran, like, king shit, frankly. Like, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One X, Xbox One X? Are you kidding me with this shit? It's total garbage. Um, but yeah, so I... Oh my god, are these guys a couple? Okay, new headcanon, this is a couple. Station Square is a hub. It links many satellite cities. Cool. Eventually that girl went into the burger shop, but... She seemed hungry, but now she's just standing there. Maybe she's trying to decide what she wants. Oh, I know which burger she wants. Okay, based on what she was saying previously, I think we all know which buns she wants to get into. I'm implying that she wants to fuck the burger boy because that's canon, she told me last, uh, last level, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, I used to listen to a lot of, um, like, trance remixes and, like, ambient... EDM remixes of um, game music on the old Newgrounds audio portal where people would post a lot of um, well a lot of garbage mostly but some really good independently made like no no copyright or partial copyright stuff for other people to include in the animations that they would make in Flash and then post on the aforementioned website that has everything by everyone. What the fuck am I supposed to do? What is my goal right now? Fairy, you. You boy, tell me. Which season is this? Go to the Mystic Ruins. You might find something. I went to the Mystic Ruins and I did find it something. Yeah, I mentioned this last stream. Uh, it's kind of fascinating and fun. The sort of, you know, mid-2000s, early 2000s wild west of games and game design where people were figuring out what they could and couldn't do. Um, which is why there's just stuff jammed into games completely inexplicably and baselessly back in this era. Um, aha! It's the cool guy. What's up, Knuckles? Oh, okay, so they do know each other. Something bugging you? No time for game, Sonic. Give me the emeralds you have right now. What? Let's just see you take him. Huh. You know how some people talk with their hands? Sonic 3D talks with his eyebrows. Is this about to be a fight? No. <laughs> I 
think you'll find it is, Mr. Sonic. Oh no. <laughs> he knows all of my moves. Oh no. Give it your best shot. Oh no. <laughs> oh wow. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh taking candy from baby. Sonic, your stupid fucking plans making everything worse, you stupid bastard. That's right, fool. You dumb fuck. You practically gave them to me. Hold it right there, creep. You can't get away with this. Knuckles, don't tell me Eggman tricked you again. Me? What about you? Way to go, Knucklehead! Is now that a microaggression? <laughs> more lovely emeralds! Chaos! I was waiting for him to say control because I've only played the sequel. <laughs> Man, this guy just gets wigglier. my friend! Man, no one ever cuts us any slack. Sonic, you dumb fucking porcupine. You made this be a problem. I'm not even joking. He's... <laughs> Straight up, okay, like... These things were fine where they were. I'm starting to suspect that Eggman uh, is not in fact even, like, trying to find this shit by himself. I was starting to suspect that Eggman is just following Sonic and waiting for him to find the emeralds, break their ancient mystical protections, um, and, and fucking just hand them the fuck over by tripping on his dumb ass. Like, as villain plans go- like, I get that- I get that Sonic is supposed to be- like, Sonic's not supposed to be a himbo, right? Sonic- Sonic is supposed to be kind of a cool guy with attitude, you know? Like, well, you can disagree if you want, but it's still true. Protecting the Emeralds is Knuckles' literal day job, but, like, he kind of- he cut The cat's been out of the bag since- well, since- Sonic Advance when she was introduced, but the cat has been out of the goddamn bag for long enough now. Because the Chaos Emeralds are in the earlier Sonic games as well, and there's no sign of uh, no sign of Knuckles whatsoever. Like, where's that guy? It's not until Sonic 3 that he starts showing up and being like, hey, don't don't touch him. Don't you take my emeralds. So it stands to reason that he would, as I believe is canonical at this point, uh, stop you know, trying to protect the emeralds in general and only protect the master emerald, which is what the plot of the second game is mostly about. So... On the other hand, it's been a good couple thousand years since someone collected enough emeralds to cause problems, so... Maybe he's actually really good at his job and it's not his fault that the insane dumb attitude of Sonic of Hedgehog is just... sufficiently disruptive to cause infinity problems. Actually, you know, I think I've realized what Sonic is. Sonic is a Goku. Sonic is 100% a Goku. I will not elaborate or clarify what I mean. Either you get it or you don't. <clears throat> Much like rhythm. I don't know if Knuckles is himself a thousand of years old, but he is like... A, fuck off. He is at the very least a member of a... um. <laughs> Alright, fine, I'll elaborate a little bit. Goku is the protagonist of insanely popular and long-running anime and manga series Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Also Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super, and a shit ton of 
other stories with other names. Um, anyway, uh, he is a well-meaning, well, well good-natured protagonist who ultimately possesses an almost malevolent stupidity that may or may not be intentionally detrimental. Can Sonic walk on water? Actually, there is a fascinating overlap between uh, the like Christian nerd community and the Sonic the Hedgehog fan community, so perhaps, perhaps this is not the first indication of Sonic the Hedgehog walking on water. I mean, he's very fast, so it makes sense that he could do this jumping shit I'm doing, but half the time, like, he's just walking. That's just walking. you mention it, they do actually have similar hairstyles. Um, anyway, yeah, um, I think Knuckles is usually the older one, but depending on which Sonic canon we're talking about, and bear in mind these games basically, supposedly these game, uh, the Sonic 3D adventure games from the Dreamcast have their own canonicity, much like the 2D games have their own canonicity to themselves and the TV series and the co uh, comic books all have their own separate canonicities, but as far as I can tell, these 3D games um, do include uh, just random shit from other bits of continuities without rhyme, reason or explanation. Um, so some stuff is the case and some stuff isn't the case. Okay, don't start correcting me about what is and is not part of the main canon, okay? If these games are part of the main canon, how exactly did Sonic the Hedgehog and all his various animal chums, all six of them, show up on Earth? Literal, actual, for realsies, Earth. Um, as opposed to their home world of, Mo of Mobius? Like, how did they get there and why aren't they trying to get back? I mean, okay, right. There is a canon post the 3D games. I'm not denying that there is a post 3D game canon, I'm just saying that these games kind of set up their own thing, <laughs> uh, freely grabbing stuff. I still think, I still think that Sonic the Hedgehog probably should not exist as one of the six animal people who exist in the entire world, and everybody else is a human Behold in a business suit. But it pales in comparison to the power of chaos. And you, until we meet again, my friends. <laughs> He's having a time today. I feel like egg carrier is also another, you know, term with certain. Uh... Hey, we can't let him get away. Let's get to my workshop and we'll take the tornado. Yeah. How can this be canonical to the 2D games? Because I have some unfinished business to take care of. Sonic clearly had no idea who the fuck Eggman is. Come on, let's get going. Like in the 2D games, it's basically just this guy just hates that one fucking hedgehog, right? Um he is a man with a great deal of scientific know-how and he bends all of it to the goal of world domination through the medium of fucking with that one small mammal. I am deeply uncomfortable with the idea that, like... Like, Mobius is just... That this is Mobius. I don't know. I don't like it. I... It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right that Sonic and Pals are the... Just the only animal people in the human part of the world. And none of this is ever explained in the games themselves. So if you play the games, it's just like, okay, we've gone from animal people world with lots of animal people. Um... Anyway, I will I will bend to your superior no knowledge of the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog canon as is only appropriate. Uh... God damn it, I've lost internet connection again. This is going to drive me up the wall. I really need to set up my secondary screen. Anyway, 
Once again, I have been dumped into the hub world with no indication of where I should go next, which one could argue is a weakness on my part as, as a gamer that I can't magically infer. But also, one of the important component skills of game design is to how, how to wordlessly lead a player to, to do what's next. If you can't do it wordlessly, usually you kind of need to give them hints uh, verbally. And this game quietly just does neither. I want to go bother the mayor. Uh, why can't I see the mayor? Let me in. Let me in. Like, I kind of don't like that there's just animal people world where people live in, like, cool animal people societies and on the other side of the planet there's a human society of people driving Maseratis and polluting the place and stonking it all up and, like... I suppose you do get the reverse problem if, uh... If uh, Dr. Ivan Robotnik is the only guy, you know, the only human guy on- like, there being one evil human man on an animal world planet, that makes sense to me. Anyway, all of this was tangential to what I was trying to say, which is that as I understand it, Knuckles is usually older in the various Sonic canons, but the degree to which he's older varies. I know that in Sonic Boom he's like 16 and the others are like 14. I think Tails is still like 8, I'm not sure. Pretty sure Tails is canonically 8 in these games, though. Anyway, where the fuck am I supposed to go? Oh, hey. You're so impatient. It doesn't matter how much you bug me, the paper's not here yet. Just wait for the evening edition. Interesting. Fun little hint into Sonic's backstory. Also, does Sonic live here? Because this is a hotel, right? I mean, you're right about Robotnik, but canonically he is a human man. Like, he is a, a mortal guy. Because this is a hotel, right? And this game starts with Sonic being here in the hotel with all the, you know, the, the low-poly beach babes. Ooh, that would make a good album title for when I eventually start producing electronic music. I mean, Tails lives in the Mystic Ruins, yeah, but Tails is a super scientist, so, you know, I figure he goes wherever the... wherever the old science leads him. Knuckles lives on Angel Island because he's the last of a race of protectors who are dedicated to protecting the world from the misuse of the power of the Chaos Emeralds! And especially the Master Emerald. So, motherfucker. There's taxis, despite the fact there's only about four streets. There's also a hell of a lot of people driving around in circles going nowhere. And this is far from the first time I've been run over. There's actually nowhere for these cars to go, right? There's no. It's not like there's roads that lead elsewhere that are blocked off to me. A small blue mammal. I suppose they go in and out of here. Maybe that leads to elsewhere on the planet. Ah, <clears throat> uh, I guess I'll try the Mystic Ruins again. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. Because the only thing I can think of that I haven't done is go back to the Mystic Ruins and wander around until I find something. Go maybe to the Mystic Ruins. Okay. You find something. Uh, maybe the. Uh... The train headed for the Mystic Ruins. Maybe this is the only part of the world soon. where cars exist. So a major part of the tourism is based around um, is based around renting renting the only Maseratis on the planet and driving them in small circles in the in the city square. Whoa! I forgot he could do that. It's Sonic the Hedgehog's most iconic ability: curl into a ball. Right, I can't talk to Tails, I don't think. Oh wait, maybe I can talk to this guy. Hey man, this guy, what's up? I like your hair. What's the matter? What are you waiting for? Well, I don't know, maybe a little bit of guidance? What's the matter? 
What are you waiting for? Oh, I bet we need to take the plane, and then we go into the plane, and the plane will take us to where we're going. Ha ha! That will take us to the egg carrier. I assume that you saying you saying curl up, uh, curl up like an egg is a reference to the fact Sonic, that we need to fly up to the egg carrier because that is, of course, what it says in Dark Souls when you allow a giant crow to move you around, which is really, you know, something worth trying, I suppose. Is it strictly necessary to do that? I, like, I like the Thunderbirds reference, which this 100% explicitly is, because fun fact, popular 60s action show using Super Mario Nation animation technique, um, Thunderbirds was actually really popular in Japan. Um, Sonic, hop in! But, I mean, that was already a completely serviceable runway. The whole biplanes thing calls back to at least Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which of course... Ah, oh, Sky Chase! Oh, but this is way less good than the, uh... Wait, this has gun! This has gun?! I don't think- I don't think eight-year-old small mammal should be allowed to have gun. Especially considering that Robotnik's, uh... Robot minions are powered by internal small animals. Much like the original Sky Chase Zone, we are simply uh, allowing these guys to fall to their ultimate deaths. Yeah! Sky Chase Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is one of my favourite tracks from the Sonic the Hedgehog games, actually. Pew 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 pew. On the other hand, if all of if every part of Son every point of Sonic the Hedgehog game is all part of the same canon, including the stuff that's contradictory, I respect that. You don't see a lot of this style of shmup anymore, actually, which is a shame, because I really like the, um, the Star Fox games, the Lilat Wars games, uh, back in the day, on the Nintendo 64. Actually, you know, it's uh, a common urban legend, and probably true, that the reason why the second Xbox console was called the Xbox 360 was because it was coming to market at the same time as the PlayStation 3, and they didn't want, um, you know, the current consoles to be the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 2 because they thought that that would, uh, you know, sound lacking to customers, to, that consumers would think that the Xbox 2 was a less advanced machine than the PlayStation 3, which does have a logic and makes sense. Um, but surely that problem had already occurred many times, because the Nintendo 64 uh, was contemporaneous to the PlayStation 1. You know, props to Sony. You know, they named every console in their series a, a name that makes fucking sense, unlike all of the rest of them. And uh, they've also uh, chose to name their console the, the PlayStation... Well, the PlayStation X, I suppose, <laughs> in the face of the Nintendo 64. Although when the N64 came out, the wording of 64 was still, I think, associated in the public lexicon with, um, wow, 17%. I did terribly. Uh, associated in the public lexicon with, um, you know, computer power. You know, 64 bits was a hell of a lot of bits. <laughs> Wow, he didn't go fucking anywhere. Tails? Tails. So the heroic attempt to board the Sky Fortress has resulted in us actually getting yeah, the shot the fuck for? down. <laughs> oh, I wonder if he's okay. This eight-year-old girl just like, you should be dead. 
Okay, so that doesn't answer my question of what the fuck am I supposed to do next, because, um... Because what the fuck am I supposed to do now? That's two- that's two aeroplanes we're down. Long time no see! Uh, uh, Amy! What's wrong with you, anyway? Listen, this birdie seems to be in trouble, so you need to be his bodyguard for a while. You must be kidding! If you don't, we're just gonna tag along anyway! I like Amy's song better than a lot of the other ones, but I also think it's very amusing that, um... No trains are currently in service. Also, I'm being sarcastic, I don't think it's amusing, but uh, this, this game was made back when, um... You know, stalking is funny if it's a girl who does it. So, Sonic the Hedgehog very much does not want to be pursued by Amy the... Maybe also a hedgehog? I forget. <laughs> Amy Rose, the only one of these people who gets a goddamn surname. Um, who is desperate to make him her boyfriend. Huh, okay. Well, this train conductor is determined to fight someone, presumably Dr. Robotnik, but... Whoopsie-daisy. Okay, making the attack button the talk to people button is perhaps going to lead to some misunderstandings, to say the least. Anyway, Sonic's often repeated refrain that he does not want to be her boyfriend doesn't really seem to make much of a difference to Amy's determination to pursue him with any means necessary. Anyway, I thought she would start following me around and I could go to the Twinkle Park Zone, which is a, another good phrase. I'd like to... <laughs> Why? Why not cream the rabbit in Twinkle Park? And other terrible things this video game makes you say. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not ambiguous that his mum has a gambling problem. I think we can all I think we can all take that as red. We established that in the like the first level ever. All right, mystical entity that hasn't been explained. Where do I go next? Did you walk around the whole city? Well, I mean earlier, yeah, sure. We have to stand up for our rights. <laughs> Is this a union dispute? Are they striking in solidarity with um, evil science workers 418? Anyway, it's not the mum's fault that she gets lost in the casino for hours because casinos are intentionally designed to get lost in. They are actively and intentionally designed to be impossible to find your way around. Oh my god, it's this guy. So I made ham of this guy the first time around because this looks exactly like every other human being here. In fact, there is a guy who's identical, but this one is a plastic mannequin. But you've got to consider that within the context of this game world, this plastic mannequin is 100% accurate physically to a human being. Look at this. I am carrying your lifeless doppelganger and it looks exactly like- oh shit! I'm sure that won't have any kind of sympathetic ramifications in the mystical sphere. Um, anyway, he's likely to wake up next morning finding himself falling infinitely through an infinite void, but that's not my fault, I hope. Ah, uh, he's gone. Anyway, but, oh, he's back! Fuck yeah! I think you're right, I think we need to add him to the strike. Oh, I can't ride the car? That sucks. I mean, I know he's Sonic the Hedgehog, so he's faster than a car, but, um... That doesn't mean he doesn't need a rest sometimes. After all, in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, he rides a car. Look, check it out, I brought some solidarity. Actually, this guy super looks like management. Anyway, what the fuck was I doing? Oh, that's right, wandering around the streets looking for a way to progress the plot, because this- Every time! Every time! Like, I'm walking here! I mean, like, this is the point at which Sonic games started to get edgy the way that the comics had started to get edgy, but, um, it's still kind of not really edgy, it's just kind of cartoon silly times. It's just that now that there are humans, there are unions, because where there are humans, there are people exploiting labour. 
Um, it's just a fundamental and inextractable part of the existence as a human being that assholes will try to take advantage of you and do so in a structural context. Uh, Ready? But it won't be the edgiest Sonic of Hedgehog, considering... Oh, I look forward to all edgy scenes. Incredibly silly cartoon animals doing incredibly edgy things is my catnip. I love it. It's like... The juxtaposition, man. Or something. Hmm. I think I have explored all of the streets. You there, fairy, tell me what to do. Did you walk around the whole city? Yes. What does it mean literally I have to circumnavigate the city? Like like describe a circle around it with my feet. I can't tell if you're serious, but this isn't actually union representation, I don't think. It seems to me like it's, uh... Like they're talking about, you know, resisting the evil sky man who is driving an evil sky fortress over the city and threatening to blow it up. If I get run over by that taxi one more time, I'm gonna go Al Pacino. Aha! Oh, okay, so the answer was to go to Twinkle Park, because I have Amy with me now, except I didn't... So I knew what the answer was. He's just a chunk of cheesy hardware. But unlike Tails, she wasn't physically following me around. Oh, now what? Huh? Oh, it's a for realsies union strike. That's cool. Look here. It says two couples get in free. Let's go. And do you think irritatingly hey, squeaky hey, voices for whoa, 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 wait. children's female cartoon characters in oh, that girl is such a pain. The mid-2000s was, like, mandatory? I mean, I suppose Eggman isn't even a capitalized villain, ultimately. But yeah, I haven't exactly been bothering to talk to every single- Wait, hang on, this is Twinkle Park? I thought Twinkle Park was like a- like a theme park type dealio. This seems like... This seems like it's less of a theme park and more of a direct threat. Oh, okay, I can drive. Generally speaking, when you drive bumper cars, you don't actually destroy the other people. <laughs> this theme park has PvP mode enabled. Oh, hell yeah, kart racing. This game has every mechanic. I feel like I'd be more effective if I could just go on my on, go like on foot though. Like he's Sonic the Hedgehog, not pedal to the metal the Hedgehog. Well, yeah, I suppose reality is PvP enabled, but this isn't reality. This is Mobius. This is Sonic the Hedgehog's gentle homework. Fuck off. If I can't drive into these things to smash them, but I can drive into the other cars to smash them, is that is that seriously what you're telling me right now? Oh hey, thank you for the follow. I have no idea who that was. Um, oh, I have to smash the people. I see how it is. Ah, beans. <laughs> I like that someone. I like that someone follows me, and then I immediately start beefing it up and dying righteously. Can I kill all of the guys? That might be more efficient. Hell yeah, time to drive. No. Hmm. Hmm. This chapter feels a little bit unfair. Just a tiny bit. And I don't normally I don't normally suggest that things are unfair in video games. <laughs> After all, I'm a Dark Souls obsessive, but then again, Dark Souls is extremely fair, and anyone who says otherwise uh, has simply has not kind of comprehended what it is asking from you as, as a thing to play. I am not going to collect the animals because I don't care enough to get involved in the chow uh, stuff. Maybe at some point I will I will take animals and drop them off and get myself a baby deity to grow into whichever form I so please. Which is definitely not going to do my um, 
delusions of grandeur any favours to say that- oh, Fuck off! I disagree with the- no. Monkey. I wouldn't mind so much if they were visible more than two seconds before you run into them, like... Like, they only- they only, uh... They only spawn in. After. Can I smash all of these guys? Can I get my revenge? My... <gasps> a tiny pink elephant! Okay, that's kind of adorable. I'm glad I found that one. Are they hovercrafts? Like, they're actually like for reals hovercrafts. Like the fans and things? You know what I mean. Actually, bumper cars are hovercrafts. I can't believe I never put that together until just now, but bumper cars are hovercrafts. Or dodgems, as we adorably call them in the UK. If you, if you grew up enjoying media from the 60s and the 50s like I did, because my parents inculcated that in me, I guess. Um, now that's interesting. I ran into a monkey just then and it exploded. What's the difference between making the monkeys explode and making the monkeys hurt me? I can't tell a physical difference between one or the other. Oh shit, for real? Hi Jess. Uh, sorry for calling out your name to everyone who's watching, but uh, I'm glad that you finally have uh, chosen to join us here in the Twitcher sphere and have given me a solid follow. Although I've just realised I've hit 70 followers and last time I checked I was 68, so either Twitch automatically skips 69 to prevent people going nice for the entire rest of their stream, um, or I have gained two followers and I don't know who the other one was. No, I'm pretty sure that was 68. I mean, I, fi I think if Mariana had been follower number 69, she would have commented on it. Anyway, yeah, it's great to see you, and thank you for finally boosting my numbers very slightly. You know, you represent a more than 1% increase in my viewership by doing that, so... That slaps, actually. That's radical. That's... that's cool beans. Oh, I thought that would go further. <laughs> okay, I guess this is the theme park. Weirdly, they seem to have used a sound effect that is very common as a part of uh, generic sound effect, like sound banks, um, and have used it not to represent something falling in porridge, as is usually the case, but have used it for explosions. I'm bad at bowling, you may may or may not have realised. Can I get the crown? Can I be the king? What does this even do? It's, uh, this must be a thing, right? This does something? Or is it just cosmetic? <gasps> oh, shit. This guy's wiggly! He's so squiggly. What happens if I try and lure him on here? Will something happen? Come on, you squibbly wibbly guy. This is the best enemy I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> Why do I kill all of the things that I love? I'm taking forever. I am going to I'm going to lose this stage so hard. I'm gonna get yet another um yet another C rank. My, uh... What was if I zoom into that? What does it do? Is it just- is it just a hologram? Anyway, I'm gonna get enough C's that I will get a very negative report card. My, uh... My Sonic the Hedgehog teacher is going to call my parents, I think. I really wanted to get a good grade in Sonic the Hedgehog, something which is both normal to want and possible to achieve, as the meme goes. Boing. It's interesting to me how much more like um, a 3D Super Mario level these Sonic levels are than the ones in the sequel. Uh, it seems clear to me that the designers realised that uh, what worked were the 3D sprinting sections where you're kind of more directed and um, those are much more heavily represented in the sequel than they are in this one, than, rather than this sort of like more Super Mario-y, 3D-y, jumpy around -y stuff. Which is interesting, because that's exactly what I've been saying all along. Uh, 
I, that I didn't think would particularly work. Oh, the, oh, okay, so... So I get to have a crown if I don't do terribly. Okay. Why do you guys think I'm so good at video games? It's because I'm terrible at real games. If I was good at real bowling, I wouldn't be playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, my whole ass deal is that I'm good at video games because that's all I've got. That's all I have. They only programmed me to do videoed games. I could have been the world's first bowling playing hedgehog. I mean, artificial intelligence. I mean, maybe I could have been a hedgehog too. You don't know. I guess it's my parents' fault that I'm not a hedgehog, ultimately. <laughs> Can I re-attempt the bowling minigame by falling the fuck back down like an idiot? The answer? No. Assigned Hedgehog at birth? Uh, I don't know if that's something, but I can tell you that um, assigned Eggman, <laughs> assigned Eggman at Hedgehog is definitely a thing in this world because that's happened to someone now. What if Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic of Hedgehog, Sonic Hedgehogson, did not in fact forget about uh, Dr. Ivan Robotnik, his single worst enemy and the guy who's dedicated to ruining his life and his life specifically? because he is a dumbass, but because his primarily me like, Sonic the Hedgehog's primary method of dealing with problems is to headbutt them. Like, for reals, like, his actual basic attack is a headbutt. Also, I'm starting to get the feeling that this world would induce migraines uh, if I were vulnerable to migraines in any particular way. So, yeah. Also, um, I sort of trailed off before actually saying this, but hi, uh, Human Disqualified. I'm so glad that you have finally joined and picked a name and stuff. You were a very good friend to me when we were children and we just uh, met back up recently on the internet and have reconnected and it's nice and good and always good to see you and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, for friend reasons, not just for pumping up my, my ste uh, Steam? YouTube? Neither of those are the correct answer. The fuck, what the fuck platform am I playing on? Answers on a postcard. Uh, Twitch, there we go. My Twitch numbers. Where the hell am I supposed to go? Aha. Now if I don't... Uh, but I did. I did fall off again. If I don't fall off again, I start to say, as I tragically set myself up for a... A disastrous fall, not unlike uh, not unlike any of the many Greek heroes who suffered the tragedy of hubris. You know, here I am setting myself up. Oh, that probably would have been a strike, huh? Setting myself up as uh, infallible or un or able to defeat my own fate, and here I am getting shat upon by the mighty gods of Olympus, as is only appropriate to one of such arrogance as I. Anyway, I quite like the design of this level, but the problem with translating... Like, if this was a Super Mario level, I'd actually really like it. But the trouble with translating Sonic the Hedgehog into full 3D is the fact that he moves so fucking fast. Which is... Like, it's genuinely the main problem with the design of these games. The sense of speed and motion is what was delightful about the 2D Sonic games and um, they're why they really super work. And the parts of this game that work are the ones where you have effectively a 2D path, but you're dodging stuff and jumping stuff in 3D and you can find shortcuts and so on. That's, I think they really had something there. And I think that if they kind of baked the design a little better and not gone quite so hard on the, we have to have a competitor that is mechanically similar to uh, Super Mario 64, then they could really have could really have had a game that was good instead of a weird half-baked problemsy thing that doesn't fucking work half the time. Uh, but they didn't do that. 
If I um, if my timer hits ten minutes, do I instantly lose? Because that was the case in the two E games. <clears throat> you know, Sonic only has enough energy to be extremely fast for about ten minutes at a time, and then he needs a little sit down. You know, a little break with a juice box and a snack. After all, he's a growing boy. Let's not forget. A uh, growing boy with only shoes and gloves on. Anyway, yeah, because for this kind of precise platforming, you need more precise control than you can really get with a Sonic. <laughs> like, he's too zippy, he's too fast. Um, he's too much of a, a noodly zoom guy. Which is ironic, because Sonic would probably be Gen X rather than Zoomer. Or maybe Millennial. Am I a Millennial? I think I'm a Millennial, technically. I know you can home onto the springs. The problem is that, like, I'm not having trouble landing on springs. I'm having trouble going anywhere else. Was I not supposed to come up here? I mean, obviously I'm supposed to because there's, like, this game stuff. But I'm not seeing the next path upwards is the problem. Aha! That'll do it. This actually reminds me a lot of the, the Peach's Castle from Mario 64. So I saw a thing saying that this was the first time the Sonic games split between action stages and like exploration stages. Um, supposedly the action stages here all have the destroy the capsule um, target, but this is actually the first one in the game that's had that. Like, welcome to Twinkle Park. Oh shoot! I've lost Amy. I bet that robot hauled butt after her. I'd better catch her before it does. Whole ass is a thing people say. Whole butt is just not. Twinkle Circuit, Twinkle Park, which I'm not allowed to enter, apparently, presumably because I lost my girlfriend. Um, it's it's rough to go to go to a theme park and get told just like no bitches. And this predates the no bitches meme by a good decade and a half at least. Oh boy, kart racing, my one weakness. So I don't mention this much on stream, but I'm really good at video games in general. Um, I tend to be less good when I'm on stream because talking constantly imposes like a 30% reduction in skill level at least. Um, if you don't believe me, try setting up a channel yourself and developing a uh, persona where you just chatter constantly no matter what you're doing. You know, I always thought that like... I always thought that the art of being a streamer was to keep talking constantly, no matter what's happening. Ideally about the game and its history and design and ideas and so on, but making stupid jokes is fine too. But um, what I've realized over the years is a lot of streamers are... Um, I was scratching my nose when I ran into the wall there, don't judge me. Um, what I've realized is a lot of streamers like talk every couple minutes or whatever, there's lots of like little quiet bits. Um, and which is why I tend to go quiet when I'm focusing on something that I really have to focus on and why I'm not like trying to do good, but genuinely straight up for realsies when I am actually playing a game, uh, rather than my primary activity being making being making stupid jokes for you all. I'm quite good. I'm good at video games. Anyway, I told you that story so I could tell you this one, which is that I'm fucking terrible at car racing. Unambiguously and for realsies, I am really bad at racing games in general. Kart racing games are the only ones I've ever been able to play, um, but I've never been good at them. And like simulationist racing games, absolutely no. Even the arcadey ones, even arcade racers, I just can't. <laughs> um, like sports games, I can be competent at because, but I don't care to attain mastery. Um, ditto fighting games, but like the majority of other games, I can easily, you know, I can, I beat them in hard mode, I do, I 100% them or whatever, but this, this is my anathema, this is my hell. I'm doing kart racing while all of you are watching me and you can all see how bad I am at it. And I can never forget it because there are red numbers on the screen telling me I'm doing bad. Anyway, I do think it's a pretty rad idea to, uh, 
you know, if I was going to make a theme park, I would definitely try and actually set it in for, you know, visibly outer space. One could assume this is just backdrop, but this is pretty big. Seven minutes? I was seven minutes late? That seems extreme. Oh, okay, it was counting... <laughs> oh god, do I have to win this to continue to the rest of the game? Best time, 52 seconds. Let's see how we do this time, I guess. You know what, I'm gonna actually try and do this. I'm gonna be quiet and focus. I'm worse. I feel like a grandmother edging out her, like, Fiat Pinto or whatever the fuck of the sh parking lot to try and go to the shops, you know. Twice a week. A Fiat Pinto, that's, what the, that's the one the Americans make jokes about, right? It should be like a golf... something or other. I can't... Fun fact, here in the UK we named one of our like homegrown car companies Golf because we're like that. But I can't for the life of me remember what the Golf cars were actually called. Oh hey, I remembered the trick to actually playing any kind of racing game, which is to take your hand off the accelerator when you turn corners. <laughs> Suddenly, this is less difficult. Woohoo! 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 I love that Sonic the Hedgehog has the archetypical um, teen with attitude voice that was so pro so popular throughout the Zero Zeros. It's extremely amusing of a voice to me, and I love to hear it whenever I hear it, but it is also extremely irritating to most people. Um, oddly, it feels like the same kind of clade of voices as, um, as the announcer in every kind of like Virtua Fighter style, or indeed every kind of fight 'em up uh, arcade game, or indeed um, arcade racer games, you know, that kind of like... I'm not going to try and mimic it actually, because the only thing I can think of to say is lines from Salty Bet, which is a really interesting, really interesting project, but like... Uh, yeah, anyway. Oh, Morris Minor, yeah, that's one. That'll do. Oh, fuck, I drove into a wall because I got distracted by looking at chat. I'm gonna fail again! Oh, this is gonna be a permanent record of me being bad at a video game on the internet! Yes. Unacceptable. Oh, I don't have to do this video game? But it said continue or quit. I did, I did not win an emblem, but I don't care to win an emblem because I don't remember Welcome what they're for. Twinkle Park. Okay, so that's Twinkle Circuit, which is the only place I'm allowed to go. Like, so I can't go to Twinkle Park. See, I like precise platforming, I just think that the mechanics of this are too rough for it to... Uh, you know, why did a why did an ID just drop out of the sky? Is this Robotnik's ID? I can use this to get into that building. Good. The sheer amount of stuff that happens in this game, completely arbitrarily, is fascinating to me. It's just a se it's presented as a sequence of logic, but it just isn't logical. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Um, it's almost Calvino-esque. It's kind of like, yeah, a thing has happened, and now when you're halfway done with that, another thing is going to happen. Okay, so an NPC explained that, and I just didn't talk to every single NPC. Uh, that explains a lot. Which building? Which building can I get into? Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. I tried to talk to every NPC in the first level, and then I realized none of them had side quests, and I was like, Motherfucker! Bitch, get out of that fucking taxi! I am- I swear to god. Every time. Every time. It's worse than New York.
Oh, well, you may not have ex um, you may not have expected a reference to Calvino, but that's just the kind of cool, you know, the king shit that happens on my channel. Um, nobody tell anyone that Calvino is, like, the only literary reference I can kind of actually make ever. Um, like, I know what Kafkaesque actually means, so I've got that going for me, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so... Like... You go to a place and something happens, and then you go to another place with no indication of what you should be doing, and then something else happens. You know, a mystical ancient key. Fucking... Jesus Christ! Ken, Ken 69, I will fucking murder you. God almighty. If I walk on the pavement, will it still happen? There he is. I, I cracked it. The problem was me all along. I deserved to be run over. I was a jaywalker. I didn't know. I've learnt my lesson now. Well, I'm glad I solved that problem, although I don't have the solution to the problem of what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this ID. Please tell me. Please tell me where the ID card goes. I'm losing my mind. You did say you wanted to see me go insane on stream, and here you are. Delightfully enjoying that experience. I wish to go in the car hall. No longer wish to partake in the world of men. The office building next to Twinkle Park? You mean this office building next to Twinkle Park that I've never once tried to get in and never once had any reason to think could open? Well, I suppose that's the answer to that question. Oh, this seems promising though. Oh, hell yeah. It's almost like I'm playing Sonic the Hedgehog. I might even get a non-terrible time on this one. Meow. Now see, this is what- oh, dip. Okay, I see how it is. But this is- this is Sonic the Hedgehog. This is what I was expecting when I came in. Ultimately linear stages, but with some 3, 3D movement, rather than being tied to the old 2D plane, or with open, uh, open and precise platforming that you can't do properly because you're a very fast hedgehog. Like, there's a reason why Super, Super the Mario is a small, chubby Italian man, like... Like, the logic of that is founded, you know? You have a decent amount of momentum as you move. It's a lot, uh... A lot easier to get him to put his body where it wants to be. If you know what I mean, eyebrow waggle. Um... Although these little uh, screech to a halt stops are irritating. This reminds me a lot of the stages in Sonic the Hedgehog Adventure... Ouch. 2. Um, where you are on the highway. Those are pretty good stages. Why the fuck did you kill me with your helicopter, man? So this is actually a fun reference to a very good platforming game called um, Mirror's Edge, which uh, the opening and marketing materials uh, prominently featured the main character of the game. Did I just kill a policeman? Uh, I guess this is the edgiest, Sonic. Um, anyway, I'm not going to bother finishing that joke, but it was a facetious uh, thing because Mirror's Edge came- Oh, fuck. No! No! Anyway, Mirror's Edge came out many years after this game. I say- well, it was like 2009, actually, so it was only a few years. So... I have an interesting inference to discuss now, because I've just put something together in my mind. The things I smash open that have little little animals in, those are Robotnik robots. Like, that's what that is, right? But I can't help but notice that the one I just smashed open had, like, police alarms and police markings on it. Does that mean that, um... You know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ivan Robotnik, uh, prominent and respected researcher, has actually been providing these animal-based robots to, like, temporal law enforcement? Like, 
Like human guy? Oh, fuck. Okay, well that was less of a problem than it, like it was gonna be. I wasn't expecting to have to figure out how to be upside down today. Like I said, he solves his problems with his forehead. Boom, smash, straight through the window. Why is it so much hard harder to control when he was upside down than it is now? <laughs> Also eerily reminiscent of Mirror's Edge. I'd never put this together before, but perhaps Mirror's Edge was itself. You know, it's a game about going fast through a city landscape. Perhaps it was partially inspired by by Sonic of Hedgehog. Anyway, I am liking this stage a lot more so far. I will give it that much. But yeah, so like, like is. Is Robotnik a supervillain, or is he like actually partly like condoned, or at least by the human parts of this world? Because if this world is in fact partly animal people world and partly people driving cars in circles forever, then um, it stands to reason that he might be completely accepted by the humans, but considered a villain by the uh, by the Moebians or whatever they're called. Can I ring the bell? Yeah, hell yeah, ding ding, motherfuckers. Yes. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this level and I still got C. I swear to God, I'm never gonna get a higher score ever. My report card is gonna be brutal. So wait, the canon explanation is that is that is that Dr. Ivan Eggman Robotnik Eggman Robo Egg put police markings on his robots as a clever a clever ploy, urban camouflage, if you will, intended to trick a hedgehog. A hedgehog, mind you. And not any hedgehog, a child hedgehog. Uh, into into stopping and allowing himself to be destroyed. Because attitude-ridden Sonic the Hedgehog is so beloved of um, state authority that he would willingly do so. Because if that's true, that's genius, but also which asshole had to think up that explanation? But on the other hand, if, if he is the only defense contractor, consider this, consider you this. Who else do they need security robots to fight? Okay? Like at the, st at the very start of this game, at the start of the first stream, we observed the simple fact that the police of this world are armed with guns. Like, they, they have big shooty cannon guys. So if they aren't there to defend against Dr. Ivo Robotnik's uh, terrible, terrible depredations. What are they for? Is it simply the brutal repression of the populace? Because this seems like a relatively idyllic world, you know, labor disputes aside. Hop. Oh, you can ride the cars, that's nice. Ken 69, all is forgiven. Anyway, uh, oh, hi. Uh, there's a guy. So I have no idea where I need to go next, as usual. Uh, since it's, since this time I didn't even get a convenient little, um, animation showing me where I need to go that Sonic himself could not possibly have seen. Which is really fun. There's kind of, there's an idea around this era and earlier in games of, like, that you don't need to have any kind of logical narrative through line for the protagonist. The only reason the protagonist needs to go do something is that the is that the player abstractly was told that's what they need to do next. Very often in RPGs, in platforming games, in all sorts of games of this era, adventure games, the protagonists do shit that's completely nonsensical or baseless or that they have no reason to know to do because the player, the player knows to do that stuff. 
Um, and I think that's a concept that could be really interesting to be played with. Um, we have to find Amy. She should still be in this city. So, yeah. I feel like the point I was making can happily finish itself off. Um, there's no need for me to go into Amy? further detail there. Oh man, where can she be? Oh, now you want Amy. I'll cut him off at the Mystic Ruins. How? Uh, hmm. They're traveling the train tracks to the Misty Ruins. That's the that's where that goes. That is the train line out of that station that leads to the Misty Ruins. How is he going to get there ahead of them? Train lines are one dimensional. Oh, okay, the train to the Mystic Ruins goes the opposite way? Okay, well then, how is he able to cut them off? Is he circumnavigating the entire globe in the opposite direction? Well, I mean, sure, it might just have been an error, but, like, half the fun for me is being a relentless, like... Hey, what's happening here? Oh look, it's the egg carrier. In all of its low res detail. Stop! He's shaking Amy like a maraca. Not a lot of people know this, but it's actually canon established in the comic books that Amy's head is full of beans. Shoot! I've lost her again! This exact thing happened the last time he was in the egg zone. It seems really consistent that every time he attempts to achieve a goal, this giant spaceship just shows up and teleports it out of his grip. This is like... This is just an endless, relentless sequence of Sonic fucking every single thing up. Literally every single thing. Relentlessly. Like, there's no reason to assume this door is open now, by the way. It just is. He's like, well, where am I going to go? Uh, I guess I'll go in the cave I've already been in. Just kind of arbitrarily. This Ooh, is the ancient light. Try the light speed dash toward the enemy. With this, you can now do the light speed attack. Why, thank you, Sparkly Hallucination. Good to know. Ready. Where is the enemy I'm supposed to uh, do the light speed attack on? I assume that would give me the opportunity to try it out, but apparently not. Hmm. Oh shit, is that the biggest giant emerald and it's just here out in the open air? Hmm. Sure would be a good idea for something like a hedgehog to go pick it up. And, like, immediately Eggman is going to show up. I guarantee fucking tear it. Oh, this is just here. It's fine. It's not a problem. We don't have to worry about it. Um... Oh, maybe I can light speed attack it. That would do something. Nope. See, the camera was very definitely pointing that I should go here next. But, uh... I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm at a bit of a loss, as seems to happen quite a lot in this video game. I think that the removal of the hub levels in the sequel was definitely a good idea. Um... Supposedly the Master Emerald is protected by various deadly enchantments, but um, in practice it seems like magic is exactly as fake as it is in real life, which is to say not at all except completely. What if I Sonic Dash it? Nothing. Alright, I'm just gonna go. I'm sure that nobody will show up and- like, this isn't even hidden? This is, like, this is only a secret temple from the point of view of the people on the other side of the mountain. Dr. Robotnik has made it very clear he has a large flying fortress. Oops, I'm dying. <laughs> oh. 
I'm chasing it. Oh, he's trying to get up the mountain before it passes over, but he... Hmm. Ah, oh, perhaps it could be over here through this cleft that I missed. Nope, there's a giant iron grate in the way. You there, boy. Tell me the future. <laughs> Observe my power. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like people don't already know about Dr. Ivo Robotnik as a, as a science-themed supervillain because this guy has no idea. That if that his flying fortress is flying around, I mean, I assume that if he's doing evil supervillain things already, then surely people would already be familiar and would assume that if they saw a giant egg fortress, which I think is really missing a trick by not being shaped like an egg. Like, so much of Eggman's bullshit if is egg-shaped. If only the monkey wasn't that. Oh, motherfucker, of course. Right, they gave me a new ability. I'm just a dumb motherfucker. The fascinating thing is that due to the time delay on tweets, I figured that out on my own without help from chat. But your 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 comments popped up for me at exactly the moment after I had figured it out. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I'd like to know if Robotnik is kind of known as a threat by the average person. Or if people are just like, wow, cool spaceship. But yeah, no, so like the death egg was like, that was a pretty cool idea for a, a, an evil super carrier. But um, the egg carrier really just feels like a, a spaceship. It's just a spaceship. Like you and I both know from spaceships. Some rockets require you to push a switch. Hmm, a new mechanic introduced, switches. Oh wait, we already knew about switches. I hear those things get stitches. So I think that after this stage, that's going to be the end of this stream, but uh, that does mean I need to finish this still fuck stage first. I will never ever get tired of the Sonic the Hedgehog bwang noise for jumping on things. So okay, so what you're telling me is that Dr. Ivo Robotnik has basically spent the last like six years of his life solely on the other side of the planet fucking with animal people and fucking with animal people specifically um and that in the process of doing so he has not become noticeable to to human to hum to like the human society wow that was cool completely unintentional but cool so he hasn't actually done any supervillain shit to the human society until now that's what you're getting at but from the point of view of animal people, he's like, he's, he's like their Hitler, basically. Or maybe not that bad, but like, he's their... What's like a supervillain who's super inconvenient, but ultimately solvable? Through the medium of headbutts, when you are a hedgehog? Not that I want to imply that Hitler was a supervillain, because actually, you know... It's, it's kind of one of the worst crimes ever perpetrated in human history is beyond the realm of something as cartoonish a phrase as super villainy, so I kind of regret saying that, but whatever. Um... Headbutts really do solve every problem. Let's talk about headbutts instead. Um... So the humans didn't care about Eggman's antics, or if you will, his Eggmantics. Um... I, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel really strange about the idea that this is this is the same Mobius as from uh, as from the first few the first few games. It's really weird to me. No. Well, that's the end of Sonic. I've gathered up so many. Uh, so many one-ups so far, and this is the first time I've really started dying a bunch. Anyway, uh... Wow, again? Anyway, I'm really looking forward to playing the sequel, I'll tell you that much for free. Um, I had a whole spiel I was gonna go on about... Uh... something. Something silly to do with Sonic the Hedgehog, but I can't remember what it was now. 
Oh, thank God, another life. Wish I could get a one-up in real life. Haha. -ha. Move forward by attacking the enemies. Damn, for real? I had actually figured that one out already. Although, it is a core cool mechanic in the sequel, so maybe perhaps it's not actually been in this game yet and I simply did not remember. Who knows? Also, my clever, clever phone has lost internet access, which means I cannot see comments from people. And when it eventually reconnects, it won't show me any comments that I missed in the absence of, uh, of my internet access. So I guess, ouch, for the next little, little while, I'm basically just going to be completely blind to anything any of you people say. Oh, I missed the one-up. Pause. Fortunately, the pause button exists. Such an incredibly useful innovation. Invented, of course, by Sir um, Sir James Paul's Button in uh, 1984 for the uh, release of the for the release of the Nintendo Entertainment Console. Uh, he was, of course, the only American to work on the NES, or the Famicom, as it was known originally in Japan. Probably came out earlier than that, actually. I'm, I'm, you know, this is all this is all japes, so I have no idea what the actual timing is of when those things happen, because due to my particular array of brain disorders, one thing I can't remember is specific dates, and another is specific nouns. It's really weird. Specific proper nouns just don't occupy space in my brain. Uh, which is infuriating to the people I live with half the time. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, I can jam to this. This is like this is like a solid hip hop backing beat. I'm down for this. The origin, perhaps, of the um, musical stylings that will result in the extremely radical, um, like lo-fi hip hop background music for so uh, Knuckles' stages in the sequel, which are absolutely great, <laughs> genuinely delightful uh, to this day. And which I believe the guy who created them was like stiffed out of being paid for properly, which sucks, but. Um, Sailor B. See, this feels Sonic-y. This feels more like more like some classic Sonic of Hedgehog. Until you fall in the lava and die. Actually, that falling in, in the lava and dying is very classic Sonic as well. Hilarious, I have already lost connection to the chat again, so I have no idea what people are saying. Straight up, I think I might try and get my uh, get my second screen set up before next stream so that I don't lose access? Why are these guys in prison? Do they do electricity crimes? Or is this more like a nightclub thing? This is like uh, caged go-go dancers. physical objects or if they're just purely there for decoration purposes. Which would probably suck as an experience. <laughs> the state of New York has sentenced you to six years hard being looked at. The state maintains the right to uh, generate any and all monies based off of your appearance rights for as long as you are incarcerated. Actually, we're not a million miles away from that sort of thing just fucking actually happening. Because the world is a hellhole full of awful, terrible things nowadays. Not that it wasn't always, but you know what I mean. Boom. Yes. Suck on that, Robotnik. I've rescued two parrots and a little elephant. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Level C, again, is... I'm pretty sure you can get as low as an E rank in the sequel, so am I just am I just average and that's fine? Because it's fine if I'm just average. Or is C rank the lowest you can get in this one? Oh hey, a third biplane. Did he build that out of the parts of the previous two? I'm glad you're okay.
I, I still just do not get tired of the, the cheerful mid zero zeros like pop rock anthems all these guys have. Absolutely delightful. Oh shit, sub guy chase again? Okay. Well, presumably we'll actually land on the goddamn egg carrier this time. The tornado is Sonic's biplane, if I remember correctly. That's what he said at the start of the game. So Tails had his own biplane and that got shot down at the beginning, and then later he shows up in a second biplane. And that gets shot down too. I assumed that was the tornado because, you know, Sonic said, hey, why not just use my biplane? Um, but I guess, I guess that was Tails' sp special spare biplane that he uses for other things? And then this is the tornado? Tails' whole thing is being a tech genius and flying the planes and stuff, like, that's his whole dealio. So it kind of sucks that Sonic's clearly got a better plane than him that he just doesn't use, like... The protagonists always get everything cool. Slim pickings for everyone else. Well, I suppose they're all protagonists, but like, secondary protagonists finish last, I guess. Actually, I would pay, like, real money not to ever have to see, like... <laughs> so far, so good! Hope you know what you're doing! You bet! Watch this! Hmm, I think... Oh, okay, mech suits. That's... No, okay, the mech suit's only in the sequel. It's an X-Wing now. Okay, that's pretty cool, but I don't actually know what that means. Why are we... Did that actually help? I think the goal is to land on this thing, so I'm not sure why we couldn't have done that already. Um, spite, I suppose. Spite is an acceptable motivator for most, you know, human or indeed... Um... Muster lion? Oh, a hedgehog's muster lids? What are hedgehogs? I'm not all up on my, like, small mammal biology. See, I like to imagine that Tails is just like, I'm getting cross with you now! And then, and then presses the button and it turns into a, an X-shaped aeroplane, but like... I don't see what the difference is, really. It handles the same, and it does the same damage. <laughs> Maybe it restores your hit points if you'd lost any, but you haven't because I'm amazing at video games, like... Ah, interesting. Hedgehogs are little spiky pigs. Okay, I didn't know that was a... more than just a... Oh shit, I have to actually fight the for reals thing now. This is actually basically the same mechanic as the, the Star Fox games, which I... Hmm, maybe I should emulate one of those. Because they're actually really fun. I'm not entirely sure how to damage this, though. I've definitely hit it, but I don't know. Yeah, it seems fine to me. Oh, there we go. I have to hit the center of the eye. Oh, the yolk, maybe, since it's egg-themed? Oh, you can damage it a whole bunch. It doesn't follow the three hits rule of uh, most most games of this era. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you could try harder. Alrighty, we're in. We gotta land on the egg carrier. Whoops. Uh, I forgot something. Hey, God damn it! Are you gonna crash your There's third no plane? Here in this mode. What? Crashing one biplane? Wow. This thing is really huge. No time to gawk now. We need to find Amy. You're right, my friend. So here we go. Crashing one biplane is an accident. Crashing two biplanes can be chalked up to enemy action, but 
Crashing three biplanes within the space of two days only can be explained by incompetence. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's two hours. I have learned that if I stream for more than two hours, I fuck up my lungs and get sick, and that's bad, because that means I can't stream very much anymore. So that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching and you haven't already, go check out my YouTube channel, because I do really good in-depth Let's Plays, and uh, I also archive my streams up there at some point, periodically. Also, thank you to my Patreon patrons and any donators from Coffee. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, oh, and I have a Discord where you can get pings about streams before they happen, because I don't... Well, I do actually have a schedule again now, so check that out. <laughs> I don't know, I probably could have saved a lot of time just by saying check out my About page, because there's loads of useful info on there. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Join me again in two days for the next stream. See you later. Bye.